Good morning, church family. If you want to stand with us, let's jump into worship this morning.
altars. Communion is available in the front. And if you want prayer, you can please come forward.
gonna let me down You're never gonna let me You're never gonna let me down You're never gonna let You're never gonna let me down You're never gonna You're never gonna let me down They're singing out You're never gonna let You're never gonna let me down You're never gonna let You're never gonna let me down You're never gonna let You're never gonna let me down some of you because eventually things happen suddenly amen keep believing keep waiting keep trusting because eventually things happen suddenly amen that's a word from God for you amen and so if you're visiting with us for the very first time my name is Pastor Derry and on behalf of Pastor Rob and Debbie and this great Word of Life family we say welcome to Word of Life can we give them a warm hand of welcome we're so glad that you're here worshiping God with us and you're gonna find out that we're about three things come on say it with me pursuing Jesus loving people and transforming the world amen and so this being suddenly Sunday we're introducing it to some new people who've never heard we've been talking about it for a few weeks as, as far as offering you may have your seats amen we've been talking about it for a few weeks that if you want to give to this project amen we're going to talk to you more about that um, later so don't give your suddenly project or give to this suddenly project right now this particular portion of time is this it's just for your ties and our vision 2020 offering because we are going all around the world transforming people with with missions and and crusades and anything that we can get our hands on to bring people to Christ amen and and so uh, if you're giving with the check just write it out to Word Life Church or WLC uh, if you're giving with cash there's an envelope in front of you you can text to give or WOLM dot org amen just remember we give to him because he first gave to us amen and so your vision 2020 offering here your tithes and offerings on the end amen and so father god we thank you for this gift lord god of people god that love you so much that they want to see your kingdom further father in the name of jesus lord god that they would sacrifice oh god that you might be glorified father in the name of jesus so we bless the gift and the giver in jesus name be blessed as you give today amen
on the song this morning.
hath delivered will deliver. How God anointed Jesus of Nazareth with the Holy Ghost and power, who went about doing good healing all that were oppressed of the devil, for God is with him. You may be seated this morning. God bless you. This is Suddenly Sunday today, and um, we had a Suddenly Sunday uh, a year and five months, uh, a little over a year and five months ago. Thank you, sir. And today is, we're going to catch you up on some things. This is going to be a very interesting message. Thank you, Pastor Shannon. Amen. God bless you. God is moving in your life. And God is moving in our church's life. God is moving in our school's life. Amen. Uh, different ministries, birthing, new ministries, other ministries blossoming. Truly a great, great report. Uh, Today, in my message, and I'm going to call my message Suddenly. My message today is called Suddenly. Many, many years ago, I was reading the Bible in Acts chapter 2, starting in verse 1. And it talked about the disciples had been together and praying and meeting in the upper room. It says, and then it says, and then suddenly the Holy Spirit did his thing. And the Lord spoke this word to me. He says, eventually things happen suddenly. So if you're here in the room today and you've been praying prayers for your kids, I want you to know that eventually things happen suddenly. If you've got some family members that live out of state and they are just running towards hell 100 miles an hour, but you're interceding and standing in the gap, just know that eventually things happen suddenly. God is in the business of turning irreversible situations around and shocking the world. He is a shock and awe God. Many, many years ago, this man on the front row, Shannon, he was in prison for his behavior. He deserved to be there, and they should have probably kept him there a little longer. And so there he was in prison. Only God would know that his heart would be turned towards the Lord, that he gets saved, and he'd go back to these same prisons. And now, having led more than several thousand people to Christ, through the team of people that have helped him over the years, and him and his wife and their efforts, only God can write a script like that. There are people that are not educated very, very well because everything your mom and teachers told you, you did the opposite, okay? And now you look back, you go, I wish I would have listened better when I was in this grade and that grade. And now some of you own companies. How is that possible? With God, all things are possible. These are not platitudes. These are not just some... Um, positive things that someone is just saying that are, they are true statements he is faithful and true he is the alpha and omega the first and the last the beginning and the end he which began a good work in you the bible says he will perform it until the day of christ jesus sometimes jesus finds you doing great, uh, witnessing to someone. Sometimes he finds you down on the ground after you fell. But in either way, he works with you as you're witnessing to someone and he lifts you up if you're down on the ground because that is the God we serve. He takes your feet out of the miry clay, the mess you made, and he puts you on a rock to stay. And he says, stand firm in the faith. Hold on to the doctrine. Be established in the things of God. Because God is about to do new things in your life to all who look to him, to all who trust in him, to all who hope in him. Now to those that just veg in him, a lot of good things might not happen. But to those that pursue him and love him, you may, say, you may say, you know, there was a time in my life where I was really pursuing him and God was doing things, but I've been in that vegetative state you were spoken of for a while. It's time to come out of sleep. For now is our salvation nearer than when we first believed. The Bible talks about in the end times, there being a great falling away. People that were walking with God at one time, 
that are now just, some of them just got disillusioned. Some got hurt. Some got um, off course by doctrinal, crazy, floating out there things from people that mean well or whatever. But there are others that stand firm till the end and they shall be saved. And that occupy till he comes and you're bringing fruit in the kingdom of God in this sanctuary yesterday at around one o'clock in the afternoon there was a home going for a man he doesn't attend our church but his relative does his daughter does and several other members of his family do and this home going and and we listen to some of the stories he came out of the Jesus movement days where you just like got saved, you were a hippie, you didn't know anything, but you just started telling everyone about Jesus. And he, he opened up this place in California and it had the craziest, weirdest name in today's language, but it wasn't weird then. It was like the eternal home for crazy, yeah, it was the craziest wording, but it kind of fit in the 60s generation. This time. And I found out hundreds came to know the Lord through this teen hangout where you got it. They were promising eternal peace and people found it. And different coffee shops and other things. He lived his life and now he has his reward. You are living your life. Your life does not have to be held back by lack of education, does not have to be held back by prior poverty, does not need to be held back because you went through different abusive things and other things. Those things may have been stumbling blocks and those things may have held you back at times, but now you're with God and with God you are an unstoppable, unstoppable force for him. You see, when you take a person that's the most fragile, weak, hurting person, but then all of a sudden, you put them into Jesus. They are now complete in him. They are now world changers. They are conquerors. They are on the world stage at this hour for a purpose. They've come to the kingdom for such a time as this. That they are not who they were in the flesh. They are now a spirit being made in the image of almighty God, recreated, reborn, changed, and transformed. So have confidence. It's not in the flesh. We must decrease. He must increase. We have, we have confidence in him leading our lives. Can I get an amen? All right. That was before the introduction. Now the introduction, okay? <laughs> Today, and I'm going to go rather quickly because I'm going to get at the end. Well, let me, I'll tell you what I'm going to get to, okay? So first, I'm going to give you a few scriptures about the last days. Everyone says the last days. Then I'm going to share just momentarily some vision or a vision of word of life. Then I want to give you, because this is Suddenly Sunday and we owe it to you, we're going to give you a ministry update on this Suddenly project. What is it? And how has it helped people's lives? Okay? Then I'm going to give you a financial update. All these are going to be brief, but we're going to give you that. Then I'm going to give you a construction update on things left to be done in the building. And lastly, how we can accomplish this uh, together. Amen? Um, concerning the last days and concerning you and me, um, several of you in this room were here a year, maybe, you know, maybe 60% of you were here a, a year ago, a year and five months ago, and you made commitments, financial commitments. And because you followed through and did what you did, and we did what we promised to do, God has done what he has done. Amen. In this new location with this new ministry, and we're so grateful. Amen? So at the end of the service, if God leads you to affirm your commitment that you made back then, to add to it, or new people that have joined the church since to make commitments, you will be able to do it at the end of the service. Let me put up the first verse. Revelation chapter 20, verse 10, reading out of the NIV Bible. NIV, and the devil, these, this is about the last days, and the devil who deceived them. Who's them? Everyone. Everyone that followed him. Everyone that he cooperated with him. The devil who deceived them was thrown into the lake of burning sulfur where the beast and the false prophet had been thrown. They're already there. They will be tormented day and night forever and ever. This is the final judgment of Satan, the Antichrist, and the false prophet. They lose, slam dunk, they are down, they are out. That's what the Bible teaches. Then in Matthew 25, 46... 
there's two different fates that we can, people that live on earth, it says, then they will go away. Here's the two different fates. To eternal punishment. It's the people that reject Jesus. But the righteous to eternal life. There's only two. Eternal punishment. There is a place called hell. Okay. Uh, some people erroneously teach that it's just like people are just destroyed. And there's no punishment. It's just destroyed. No. It's eternal punishment. Others... Some others have even said somehow in the end everyone will be saved. Ultimate reconciliation, the, the false doctrine is called. No, there will be people that will have eternal punishment. We're not happy about it. That's why we have a church. That's why we serve Jesus, to pull our family, our friends, and those that we don't even like out of the pit and give them Christ, but the righteous to eternal life. Turn to Titus 2, verse 13. This makes reference to the rapture. I was going to give you a lot of verses re referring to the rapture, but there's so many in the Bible, it's mind-boggling. Mind-boggling. It's not like 2 or 3 or 10 or 15 or 20. It's mind-boggling how many verses in the Bible refer to the fact he left, but he's coming back. And he's coming back for his own. It says, while we wait for the blessed hope, the appearing, everyone say appearing, of the glory of our great God and Savior, Jesus Christ. It doesn't say the appearing of the glory of our great teacher and Savior, great prophet and Savior, great nice guy, great humanitarian, great social justice warrior. No, the great God and Savior, Jesus Christ. Can I say, get an amen? amen. Jesus is coming for you. We're to be ready. We're to live as if he can come at every moment. Haven't always done that. You haven't always done that. We haven't always done that. But we need to. We need to be conscious of the fact he can come right now. Amen. Matthew 24, 14. And this gospel, here's our mission. Here's our commission. This gospel of the kingdom. Say gospel. Say kingdom. Say gospel. Kingdom will be preached in the whole world as a testimony to all nations. And then, everyone say then. Then the end will come. This gospel is going to get to all nations before the end of the end of the end. Great to have Bob and Lori back. When I walked in, I had no idea. You like, you like you disappear to help family and do things, and then you like reappear. It's like the second coming. It's amazing. It's like, you know, split the eastern sky. With you guys, it's the western sky. But may I share for a few minutes about the vision of Word of Life Church. It was referenced by Pastor Derry. Pastor Derry is, ro is a rock. He's solid. Pastor Derry can lead any church in this city. He can be the senior pastor of almost any church. He's got those giftings and calling. And he has just helped us instead for 20-something years. He's never crossed me one time. I said he's never crossed me one time. It's, it's amazing. It's miraculous. The staff that we have. Do you know we've never, ever, ever, ever had in, in the history of Word of Life, we've never had a board meeting that was not a unanimous vote, except one time there was one dissenting vote. I think it was Derry. <laughs> he wanted to hang on to the radio station. We all said, yeah, we should sell it. I don't know. He might have even been right. Maybe we should have hung on to it. But, but even that was just a... It was just a We've had that level of unity on our board in 30-something years. It's amazing, guys. It's amazing, the testimony. Um, there's problems. You know, we make problems all the time in our life. We s try to do this ministry. That creates problems. We try to reach these people. Sometimes that creates problems. We try to reach that people. I remember I tried to reach someone, and they came back that night to try to kill me. It was a group of Satanists at the River Festival. They came back that night with weapons to the church. I was inside. They came inside. The police saved me just in time. God is a great, great God. It took me a while to tell Debbie that story. I told her there was a slight incident at the building. Some people wandering homeless. I don't know what they were, wandering around. But I want to share with you vision for a few minutes, okay? 1 Chronicles chapter 22, verse 19. Our vision at Word of Life is to pursue Jesus. It says, Now devote your heart and soul to seeking the Lord your God. 
Begin to build the sanctuary of the Lord so that you may bring the Ark of the Covenant of the Lord and the sacred articles belonging to God into the temple that will be built for the name of the Lord. Our vision is to pursue Jesus. Amen? Our vision is to love people. 1 Peter 4, 8 says, Above all, love each other deeply. Say deeply. Say it again. We're to love deeply. So not just love your fave five. Not just love the people that have done good to you, but the people that have crossed you, the people that have hurt you, the people that have bit you, the people that try to take you down. You're to love them deeply. How do you love them? You intercede for them. You pray for their salvation. You pray for them to come around. You pray that they'd find Christ or find peace. Above all, love each other deeply because love covers over a multitude of sins. Powerful stuff. Because we love people, we have ministry on the streets at times, to the homeless at times, prison ministry at times. Because we love people deep, deeply, we have support groups helping all sorts of things. We have a counseling center helping people in, in the worst times in their life. We have life groups that do life together and help one another. By the way, next week, Roy Achiang is preaching. Amen. Next week. He is the head of our life groups, and next week is Life Group Sunday, and he's going to be bringing the message. I'm very excited to hear it, honestly. Um, but we have life groups because we love people deeply. We have a prayer chain. Alicia runs it. She's run it forever. Uh, a, prayer, a prayer need comes in. We send it to her. She gets the word out to everyone, gives updates on everyone. That's why we have a prayer chain. We're also called as a ministry to transform the world. In Mark 16, 15, he said unto them, Go into all the world and preach the gospel to all creation. Let me read it again. Go into all the world and preach the gospel to all creation. That's why we support people that do crusades on the foreign mission field because the scripture said he's interested. It's his main interest to get the gospel to people. So that's why we do that. Matthew 28, 19, Therefore go and make disciples of all nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father, of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. This is why we plant churches. We've planted a bunch, maybe 70 or 80 or something, and we've adopted a bunch, maybe 150 or something like that, that we've adopted, and we help them and give them money and support on the foreign field so that they can reach more people. There is another important thing we do besides going to the world. We bring the world right here through Life Prep Academy. Amen? Life Prep Academy brings students from 40 countries. Last week at the second service, there was five foreign exchange students that attended the service near the back row over there with the lights. I couldn't even see them, didn't even know they were there. You think I'm looking at every one of you? I see lights and glare. I see a few faces, but lights and glare, okay? And uh, so if you fall asleep, I won't know, okay? <laughs> Don't feel bad. Don't be like, Pastor Rob, I know he's seen me, okay? Those five foreign exchange students, all like big boys, they were all athletes. They marched down to this altar and gave their life to Christ. <laughs> Cuba, Dominican Republic, Panama, the other ones. They were from somewhere. Yeah, awesome, amazing. One from Wichita came forward. One, listen, you had all these gigantic 17-year-old athlete bodies, and then this one very younger, like five years younger, this one of ours from right around the corner came to the altar, gave his life to Christ. We reach him close by, and we try to reach him from far away. So great, okay? Um, I want to instruct the ushers right now to hand out. Would you flip some lights on in the house? Can we do that? Or is this all the lights we got? Is this them all? I don't even know. Is this every light? This, this may be every light. Can they be dimmed up? Okay, get them, get them. Ushers, quickly, in the aisles, all right? Come on, ushers, help me out. Steve, walk. Yeah, yeah, we'll do it from front to back. Steve, come on, up to the front. So down each row, I want everyone to take a card. You may use it, you may not use it, but I'm going to explain why we're giving you a card, okay? So this is a, a card to give to our Suddenly Project. 
For those of you who say, I did that a year and some ago and I've been doing it, uh, we're going to just ask you to affirm it. Affirm what you're doing. Some will we'll give some additional amounts and some will be brand new pledges. But please, everyone, take a card. On this card, as you look at it, just notice, it says Suddenly Project, and on the, uh, the left, it says, My Commitment, Today's Gift. This you'll fill out at the end of the service if God leads you, and I'm going to explain what I mean by that if God leads you. Today's gift, that means like some people will give an amount today. They, they may be giving in the future, but they want to they want to sow this today, okay? And then uh, it says my pledge, you know, that would be the full dollar amount of what you pledge or, or if you're going to give weekly, let's say it says X amount of dollars weekly or X amount of dollars monthly, you get the idea. So um, this, pr this uh, program ends March 31st. It's five, and the last Sunday is March 26th, I think, so it's five months and one week left. Five months and one week left. Excuse me, six months and one week. I said that wrong. Apologize. Six months and one week. As LaDonna put it, we're kind of entering the fourth quarter next week. We entered the fourth quarter, all right? So everyone see that card. Just hold, hold on it, wait on it, and now listen to what I'm going to share. And if God leads you, I want to show you something. Nick, stand up real quick. Everyone wave at Nick. Quick, just stand up. Turn around. You're a good-looking guy. Turn around. Everyone wave at Nick. All right, he's my, he's my friend. I haven't seen him in many years. You may be seated. I just wanted to show you something. I told you God's been doing crazy things with this thing, right? He walks in today. By the way, he hands me a check, okay? He walks in today, and he says, Pastor Rob, I, I don't know if you remember this, but about 20 or whatever years ago, um, I sold you this whatever, and, and I had told you that if you pay the whole thing up front early, I would uh, give you a discount. And he said, you know, you paid the whole thing up front early, and I know I owed you $1,300, but evidently didn't have it at the time. Twenty some odd years later, he walks into this room. I didn't. I would have never hunted him down. God didn't even remember it's been so long ago. <laughs> and he walks up and he hands me this money. I said, you have no idea how apropos it is that you walked in today. Because with this suddenly project, this is not about guilt. We don't need everyone to give. Did you hear what I said? We don't need everyone to give, just everyone that God taps. Just everyone that God taps. You're supposed to have an openness. I'm supposed to have an openness. Say, here am I, Lord. Use me, however you want to use me. God's been doing this. I said it last week. Do you know, do you know this week... We told everyone last Sunday that, next Sunday, that uh, we're going to do this, right? We're going to receive an offering, and whoever can give, and some new people make pledges, what have you. said, only do what God tells you to do. Do you know we had money come in this week before even Sunday showed up? I mean, it's, it's been a, a miraculous, miraculous thing. Tim, I'm going to hand this to you. Since you're the finance guy, I trust you having it. It could be stuck in my notebook for 20 more years. <laughs> then the check might not be good, okay? We're going to cash that check quickly, Nick. Don't go out to lunch today, nothing. Just keep the expenses down today. All right, I want to give you, uh, we're going to do a PowerPoint real quick. First, the ministry update. Can you guys put that up, Raj, the ministry update? They're going to put it up on the, yeah, April to April, okay? Actually ends March 31st, technically. Suddenly Project. Put up the next slide. Here's the ministry update. We could say 50 things, but I'm just going to share two. Since we've been in this building, five months, 30% church growth. Let's give the Lord honor and glory. Amen. A number of those have been new, new kids being, or new people being saved and, and, and others, okay? Just in the last two weeks that I know of, 11 Life Prep Academy students saved in the last two weeks. I love what my son Rob said to me toward the, uh, a couple of days into the school year. He says, well, we now know this, this building really works for a school. He said it's been amazing. The flow of traffic, the, the spirit of the kids, the excitement, the desire, the hunger, and I've witnessed with my own eyes, it's, 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 it's amazing. 
They got a great team at the school. It was like 70 or 80 some odd people on the team between sports coaches, teachers, administrators. Very exciting. Let me give you a financial update. I'm going to give you some exact numbers, okay? And I'm going to explain what these are, okay? Put up, put up the financial update. You see that first line? I want to explain it. Go through all sources of funds. So to get us to where we are, to get us that number, we sold some property. We sold some furniture. We did some fundraisers. We did other things. And we did church giving. We did a fundraising banquet for the school. We had school families give. So the goal through all the sources of funds is 2.5 and change. Received through just the church, just the church so far, 758000 Received through those additional sources that we did. Because it wasn't just about you give and that'll solve the problem. We have been doing our thing behind the scenes, doing our thing to do all the support we can as a staff, as a board, etc. Received through additional sources, 1300000 and change. Amount remaining to raise from the church, from any other sources we do in the next five months is 472000 And what's so neat is God's been doing the script. God has been doing the script. I want to share with you a construction update now. Uh, if they, you'd put the next thing up on the screen. These are the remaining items to do, okay, from upper left. So we need an AC unit in the lobby. There is no air conditioning in the lobby. So if you're a little warmer in the lobby than you are here, you know why. Now, when it was July, and it was, it was pretty warm there. That's because it needs its own unit that it does not have, okay? The Vision Kids slide, we promised them this from the beginning, that they're going to be able to come in the building, go up the spiral staircase, and slide into the Vision Kids space. The more you make it where kids love to come to church and have a great experience, and you pour Jesus into them, it saves their soul. It, it brings family members. It brings other kids from the community. You've got to come to my church. We've got this great slide, and we've got this and that. So, Vision Kids slide. Counseling Center Wing. This is a big deal. The Counseling Center Wing is going to be on this part of the building. They're going to have twice the space they had before. It's going to be awesome, and it's going to be so professional. Church and interns offices, meaning the church office wing, we're creating space for our church staff and future interns. We're going to explain more about that. These will be people that come and intern at the church and also study the Bible, study. Uh, and we're going to do an accredited type program where they can earn Bible college credit while they're doing their intern, being trained for the ministry, okay? The next thing is a prayer chapel. We need to greatly increase our prayer. We need to greatly increase our prayer. So this chapel is going to be built. In one of the rooms over here, it's going to be small but adorable. You can go in there and just quietly pray and seek God. You can go in there for hours. Okay, you'll be able to go during the week, etc. Exterior paint. We don't have to paint the whole building, but obviously the four colors on the outside of the building that the Best Western Plus had, I don't know exactly how they picked those four exact colors, but they can be improved. By just modifying some of it, we can make the outside look beautiful. Exterior paint and signage. Okay, we just have temporary banners, but a little bit more permanent signage. Now, playground. That's going to be on this wing of the building, out these doors. Uh, they're going to be a beautiful playground for our church, our school, and for all the outreaches we do for Hallelujah Night and everything we do for decades to come. Lake cleanup. So uh, we got to get the water moving. We own that lake back there. We got to get the water moving, or it turns into you know, green during the summer, right? And then it ungreens. So there's stuff you can do to get the water moving in there. So we're going to do lake cleanup. And we're going to do a prayer walk around the lake. Once again, we want God's house to be known as a house of prayer. We want people to, hey, you can, when you take your walk, if you're close by, come and walk around the lake. And there'll be these different prayer faith scriptures and stuff all around the lake. We'll get people praying for Wichita Park City. Anyway, that's the vision there. Uh, and then varied construction finishes, okay, varied construction finishes, some furnishings, not much, and a two-sided digital billboard on the highway. With this two-sided, we're allowed to do uh, a 10 by 30, 300 square feet, wh which is a good size. And it's, you know, we got, already got the posts that are up 70 feet high. We put it up there. We can blast the traffic on I-35 going north and south. We arranged, we negotiated an incredibly low price a quality, a digital sign. We just got real favor there. And so 
All these things will happen at the speed of generosity, right? As stuff comes in. I wish we would have had that digital billboard, honestly, 17 months ago. It's the only thing really through the whole thing that I go, man, I wish we had that 17 months ago because we can witness. I-35 goes from whatever, Texas to Canada. I mean, the traffic is ridiculous. It's got to be one of the better, you know, run thoroughfares in the United States, okay? And we can tell them, yes, yeah, some things about our church and school, but we can also give them the gospel with these messages, you know, and, and give out the gospel. So very, very excited about that. We have a video we're going to show you right now. Just want to show you the first day of school, just some clips from the first day of school here at Life Prep. to hear it but that last Debbie said you know asked him a question he said I think I like school now <laughs> he didn't like it the first half hour but now the second half hour I think I like school now so I just want to pray with you and if God taps you and says to contribute to this program then you obey the Lord amen um, and when you're considering contributing you have several choices of course some people can give a one-time gift today. That's something you can do. Some people that made their pledges and uh, you've fallen behind. There's probably some that have fallen behind. You can, if you have the ability to catch up. And others, let's say you have, um, say you've been making a pledge for X amount per month and, and you have a small amount left. Let's say it's whatever, I don't know, pick a small amount, $500, whatever. And you go, you know, instead of doing 100 a month for the next five months, I, I can... I can make that happen all today if you have that ability. 
So the sooner the funds come in, the sooner we get the digital sign, the sooner we get the different things, the playground, et cetera, okay? And so, uh, and then there's brand new people. You were not here, but you know, the Bible says some men labor and others enter into their labors. So if God speaks to you, you say, now how do I know if God speaks to me? Well, when you get quiet before him, we're going to pray in just a minute. If you hear that still small voice that says, give to this, then you give to this. If you don't hear that still small voice that says, give to this, then don't, because God has some other plan for you, okay? So I'm just going to pray, and you would fill out that card as you feel inspired to do so. Amen? Um, and I'm just going to pray right now. Father, I want, I'm so thankful. Thankful for even the people that fulfilled their pledges, then gave over above it and increased. Lord, didn't expect it, didn't know to expect it, never thought about someone giving more than they even said. Father, you are such a gracious God. This has been such a great experience watching you. Watching you do things with our giving, watching you do things outside of our giving, with selling certain things and, and other things. Lord God, you have put this together. We couldn't have written this script. And Lord, even yesterday, Lord, when people were at this celebration of life from out of states, they said, how did this happen? Because Lord, with the size of of the school and the size of the church we are, this shouldn't happen. This is you. This is wonderful. This is precious. And I, Lord, thank you ahead of time for all that you are doing, all you shall do. I thank you, Father. I'm just going to be quiet before the Lord, and if you fill out the card, and you can just affirm what you've already done and say, affirm and bring that card and put it in so we know that you plan on continuing through with that. Or if you want to add something to it, you can. But either way, whenever that card is ready, you just bring it up to the front over the next five minutes, okay? that there are envelopes in the seats, in the back of the seats, and if a person wanted to give with a debit or card, just take that envelope and you fill it out, you can give that way as well. Five months and a week left, so you're not committing for 30, six months and a week left. You're not committing for 30 years, okay? So six months and a week, that's what's left in the, in the program. came to the altar last Sunday, right there. He uh, either a dedication or rededication, but he was the young man at the altar. That was powerful, beautiful, beautiful. Now, I know that's not enough time for everyone to process it and fill out the card. So what I want to say, thank you. What I want to say is, um, 
at any time as I, I'm going to read this letter to you, you could just keep coming up, but if the service ends and you still need to finish it out, you can hand it directly, the ushers are going to be at the back door, so you can just hand it directly to the ushers and they'll immediately get it in the right spot. There's one more thing I want to share with you, something we did 20 years ago, we did it three times, and I want to do this because I think God will use it in a great way. Let me tell you what it is. About 20 years ago, we did this golf event. And one of the things, it was a fundraiser for the school. And one of the things about the golf event, we were asked, all those that participated and helped, to, um, we were told everyone has a sphere of influence. And we were given a letter like this. And the letter basically said this. I've made a contribution to this school because I believe in it and I'm helping making, make it happen. And I want to ask you if you would consider making a one-time contribution. And you only send the letter to those you feel comfortable. Maybe it's a parent, maybe it's a kid, maybe it's a friend, maybe your doctor is a believer and you know he'd probably give to something like this. And so we, we just called it a letter project. And here's what happened. Back then about, about um, I don't know, uh, 50 people participated you know, from the school and they each turned in like maybe 15 letters, um, meaning you, you fill out, so you, you take your like address book, your Christmas card list, whoever you know, whatever, and we, we give you these letters and these envelopes, and you just fill out the envelope, you know, to John Jones at such and such address. You bring it back next week, and then we mail all of them out at the same time on Monday. We'll put the stamp on it. We mail it all out. And the letter says you can send a gift in this envelope, or if you just want to give online, you could do it this way, or QR code, you could do it that way. You know, text to give. It gives them the couple of choices at the bottom. And what happened back then, there was no QR codes, there was no giving online back then 20 years ago, or at least we didn't know about it. But what happened is we sent out like these 750 letters, and over the next month, like about 50% of them came back with money in it. We weren't badgering anyone, asking anyone 20 times. The ones that didn't want to send didn't. So I want to, so here's the letter. We have these letters in, um, we're going to have them at the door. They're in packets of five. Back then, the way they did the program, everyone took 15. Now people have less addresses than they used to because people email and text and stuff. So 15 may be, you know, maybe way too many, maybe just 10, you know, whatever. And some took more. Like, I had a real long list. I said to myself, all the people that had gone to the church over the years that I know we helped, we won them to the Lord, we baptized their, their family member, we did this, we helped them through. I'm going to ask them all just one time to send a contribution. We had some of the most beautiful gifts that came in from people that hadn't been in the church in eight years. But they said, Pastor Rob, I'll never forget when my teenager walked that aisle. Yes, I'll help you. And so this is a spirit-led thing. You only do it to whom the Spirit leads you to do it to. You kind of like pray over it. So if that's something, it takes about an hour, really, to, to address like 10 envelopes or something like that. You know, it takes about an hour or less, I guess. And you just bring it back next Sunday, and then we watch the miracle happen. So those envelopes are at the door. I would, uh, here's the letters, okay? And um, I, maybe I should read the letter. Let me read it, okay? It says, hey there, hope all is going well. I wanted to take the time to share with you a project that is dear to me. So this is you sending it to them. My home church has taken a huge step outside of the box and purchased a former hotel in Park City, Kansas called Best Western. We are currently in the process of completing our project of renovating the entire building to be home to our church, K-12 through school, and our counseling center. The project began a year and a half ago and is currently in phase four. This is a $2 million type project. I realize that's a huge number, but I'm excited to share that through my own sacrificial giving, the giving of other church members and our school families, as well as other fundraising efforts, we have reached 80% of our goal. We still have much to finish and do, like a digital sign that will allow us to share the gospel on the I-135 highway, a playground for our children, church offices, and counseling center offices to complete along with finishing touches on a few construction areas. When complete, the church, school, and counseling center will be diligent in bringing transformation to thousands of families each year. 
Word of Life Church is dedicated to pursuing Jesus, loving people, and transforming the world. This happens through the church, school, and counseling center every single day. However, the need is greater than us alone, and I personally know the potential impact this will have on families for generations. Would you please prayerfully consider, it, consider helping me and my church complete this phase with a one-time tax-deductible deduct, tax gift? If so, I would be so grateful. Thank you so much for hearing me out and praying on how you can help us complete this phase. If you would like to give a financial gift of any amount, I have enclosed a return envelope for your convenience. You can also go to wolm.org slash giving and give your gift to the Suddenly Project North or text any dollar amount to the phone number or simply scan the QR code below. So very gentle letter and I would just want to pray right now uh, as we close today's service and know this, if you made a new pledge today, as you're in the lobby, as you're about to exit the building, right there in the lobby, there's a table that LaDonna's manning and her team. And everyone that made a new pledge today, get your Suddenly t-shirt so you have one like us. You'll sign the banner. We all sign this like covenant banner. We're going to do this for Jesus. Sign the banner. That's going to be a keepsake that we're going to have forever of who made all this happen, right? And then we also have a prayer journal to give you that we gave to the, everyone a, a little over a year ago. And then lastly, so that's in the lobby. Lastly, right here at the double doors, as soon as you're about to go through the double doors, if you want any of these letters, remember they're in packets of five. So if you take two packets, that's 10. So you just tell them, give me two packets. Give me, you know, I did a lot, I told you, because I had this long list back then. I had the, the whole phone book and everything. So... Uh, that's it today. God bless you. Let's stand to our feet. Let's just honor the Lord with a praise offering right now. Thank you, Jesus, for all you have done. Lord, we thank you for the 11 students that have gotten saved in the last two weeks. We thank you for the counseling center ministry that's going to flourish in the new, bigger, better space. We thank you, Father God, for the school and the students you've brought from 40 countries, even the ones that live behind these walls. And Father God, we just pray that one day when we look back, if you, if you tarry, we would say, look what the Lord has done for years and decades. All glory to you in Jesus' name. Amen. You may be seated. I mean, you may be dismissed. Okay. There was a time that I swore I would never go back. I was blind to the truth, didn't know what I had. I was running, I was searching, but every place I turned for healing left me more broken than the last. Take me back to the place that feels like home To the people I can depend on To the faith that's in my bones Take me back to a preacher and a verse Where they've seen me at my worst To the love I had at first Oh, I want to go to church Trying to walk on my own, but I'm wound up lost. Now I'm making my way to the foot of the cross. It's not a trophy for the winners. It's a shelter for the sinners. And it's right where I belong. Take me back to the place that feels like home. To the people I can depend on. To the faith that's in my bones. Take me back to a preacher and a verse Where they've seen me at my worst To the love I had at first Oh, I want to go to church I want to go to church